Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we have another First Impressions and this was a really highly requested product. The Cover FX Custom Cover Drops. I've had these sitting in my drawer for like two weeks, so I'm really excited to try them. If you haven't yet heard of them, the concept is really interesting. Essentially, it's marketed as a pure pigment that you can mix with your favorite skincare or your favorite primer to custom create your own foundation. We have a dropper delivery system yet again. It is 15 mil or half a fluid ounce. Remember that you're going to be mixing this with other products. It retails for 44 US dollars. Um, and if you're in Australia, you can actually get this at Sephora Australia. It feels so good to be able to say that. I actually don't remember the price point, but I'll put it somewhere on the screen. In terms of color selection, we have 24 different shades. So it's a decent shade range. And the shades are segregated into three different categories. Uh, G, which is a more warm yellow undertone. N, which is neutral. And P, which is for cooler undertones or pink undertones. I eyeballed my skin tone and I think I'm between G20 and G30, depending on the time of the year. If I put a drop on the back of my hand, um, unmixed, it feels a little bit like a dry oil, much like a lot of the new age foundations. So it is a little bit on the drier side. So I'm going to be mixing it with something a little more emollient today. I was a little bit overwhelmed with all the mixing scenarios. So I did a bit of research and I watched a first impressions video by Tati, Glam Life Guru, I love her. And she mixed it with the Cover FX Anti-Aging Primer. She only had good things to say, so we're gonna start here. Make sure you give these a good shake because they're that sort of liquidy formula. I'm mixing about one and a half pea size amount of the Cover FX Anti-Aging Primer with two drops of the G30 and one drop of the G20. I think that that'll be a decent match for me. So this is the situation that I've got going on right now. It's a little bit messy. I will apply a light layer to the right hand side of my face um, and we'll see how we go. I'm using a beauty blender just because it seemed like a safe choice. What have you guys been up to? I am sick again. Would you believe that? Uh, and I haven't left the house in what feels like forever. And I'm starting to get the urge to talk to people. And uh, when an introvert says that, you know it's for real. So that is a thin layer on the right hand side of my face. I think I have about a light to a medium coverage actually. You can still see some of that irksome rosiness in my cheeks. I think this is a pretty decent shade match for my NC20 to NC25 skin. Sometimes my lighting situation can make my face look lighter than my body, but I promise you it looks right in person. Let's try another thin layer and see if it builds. That is a second thin layer on the right hand side of my face and I think I've built to a pretty solid medium coverage here. The Cover FX Custom Cover Drops are quite potent so I do believe that you could get to a full coverage if you wanted to. I'm going to finish off the rest of my face and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is the entire face done and I've inspected this in natural light. Always a good idea. Two critiques. Oh my god, an aeroplane. Two critiques at this point. My nose is looking a bit dry and dehydrated. I am prone to dehydration, but the primer was quite emollient, so I wasn't really expecting that. I'm also getting quite a significant amount of creasing um, around the crevice of my nose where the skin folds. So if you have a lot of fine lines, that might be something that you want to take into account. It's hard though, because so much of this review is dependent on the mixer itself. In terms of the finish, it looks like a standard satin, so not super dewy and not super matte. Um, it's still a little bit tacky to touch. Let's test for fragrance. I can definitely smell the alcohol in this. So if you are sensitive to alcohols, definitely keep that in mind. And there's an overlay of something else that I can't quite put my finger on. It smells clean. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna leave it there. I'm adding some under eye concealer before I take my flash test so that maybe I look human. I'm using the Maybelline Fit Me concealer today, which I've kind of started liking all of a sudden. So as far as I can tell, neither of these products have SPF. So let's do that flash test right now and we'll see if we get any ghostly flashback. I'm quickly setting my T-zone with some Rouge Bunny Rouge Diaphanous, what I would do on any normal day so that I can have a proper means of comparison. Okie dokie, it is currently 12.02, so noon. I will be back in a few hours to tell you what I think. Hey everyone, welcome back. 
It is now 7.16 p.m. and I'm here with the lovely Beauty Life Michelle. Welcome. Hey! <laughs> Welcome to the Sham Frip. Sham Frip! Yay! <laughs> I've invited her here today because she has a different skin type and her own opinions on the Cover FX custom cover drop. So tell us about your skin type. And so I have very combination skin. I'm that girl who has a really congested T-zone, but then I get a lot of dryness on the cheeks. I always find that my cheeks are like my most dry, sensitive areas. The first time I used it was with this Dr. Jarrett Day Tint, and it worked perfectly for me. I used the Day Tint, the L'Oreal Lumi Magique Primer, and then two drops of the Custom Cover Drops, and it created the most amazing base for me. It was like the perfect everyday, just going to work or uni base. And it gave me a very natural skin look, but with that coverage I needed, and I found it wore really well through the day. It didn't really look um, drying on me, it didn't really separate, and I just loved the finish. So I'm gonna ask Michelle to give us a third perspective on how my foundation looks compared to how it would normally look. So hit me with it, <laughs> hit me with it. Yes. Yeah. So Karima and I hang out quite a bit, I would say. And, yep. and the one thing I always notice about Karima is that her makeup looks like skin. Whereas for me, I'm more of like a makeup, makeup wear. Does that make sense? Makeup makeup. Yeah, I like my makeup like so makeup. makeup. Yeah, yeah. I'm a bit more high coverage. Whereas Karima has fabulous skin without any pigmentation. And whenever I see her, I always look at her and think, your foundation looks like your skin. I never look at her and see makeup on her face, but I can totally see what she's saying today about the custom cover drops. I can see it on your skin and I can tell that it's it's drying you out slightly around here, and the middle of the, the brows. brows. And it's just not the finish you normally go for, I guess. Exactly. Yeah, and that's the difference, yeah. I think that's spot on. Today, I can see makeup on my face. The coverage, I think, is so customizable. You could go from super, super sheer Does coverage. Does what it says in the tin, hey? It's custom just, cover drop. It's just so custom. You could go from a super sheer coverage to a pretty solid full coverage if you decided to apply it alone. In terms of wear time, this has pretty much stayed intact all day. Perhaps the only longevity issue that I've found, it does transfer quite easily. So when I added some bronzer to the bridge of my nose, I found that the brush removed a bit of coverage. That's something to consider uh, if transfer is an issue for you or if you happen to be a face toucher. Oh, I get like white patches from being on my laptop and just being like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think this is actually one of those products that is not well suited to a first impressions kind of video because it really depends on the kind of products that you're mixing it with and there's so many different kind of scenarios that can occur. Would you agree with that? Completely agree. You could mix this with even a full coverage foundation or your lightest moisturizer. If you are looking for an out of the box solution, I'm not sure that this will fit the bill, but if you're okay with playing on a Saturday afternoon with your favorite foundations and your favorite primers and your favorite skincare, then this is definitely something to try. One of the ways I found this product really, really useful that I don't know if you, you don't fake tan, do you? No, no I didn't think she did. No. Um, I do fake tan quite a bit and I found this really, really good for making my foundation match my fake tan. So adjusting it. Adjusting it. And I think that's something that if you're a fake tan wearer, <laughs> you will understand what I mean. It's very hard to constantly be changing up your foundation shades when you're in a fake tan cycle. Really helpful. Yeah, actually, I think that's a really good tip. For fake tanners out there, maybe a drop would just adjust your foundation shade to match your skin tone better. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this first impressions from someone who has normal to dry skin and someone who has very combo skin. <laughs> combination skin. If you have any questions, definitely leave them down below and Michelle and I will pitch in and we will answer all of the questions. For sure. Definitely check out Michelle's channel. I will leave all of her links down below. She is amazing. She's one of my really good friends and I'm sure that you will love her channel. We, we hope, hope you all have, have a wonderful, wonderful day and, and we, we will, will speak, speak to you all very soon. Bye. <laughs> yeah. I think oh, thanks for having me in your video. Bye. Yay. Favorite human oh alert. <laughs>